CEO. And so what is Polish Geek and why am I here? We do extensions, web development, um, web applications. Uh, and by the way, all these slides are available online, and that is a J, um, not an I for JWC, not IWC 12. So these are already online. Uh, we're going to tweak them, add a few icons and stuff, probably add a little more meat for when I'm actually talking about stuff. Um, but this class and this topic actually uh, was born out of an application, an extension that we built. Um, and we built it from the ground up to be multiple carts. And so what it is, is it takes your web store, your products, copies them over to eBay, and then keeps the inventory in sync. So that's just a little what that does. And we'll go into, it's kind of a case study in parts of it. We're going to use that as a case study, but it's a lot about design and methodologies. And it is a uh, Joomla native extension. So why would you want to do cart agnostic design? Before I really get started in this about why, how many people have actually worked and coded extensions for one, uh, for one shopping cart? Keep your hands raised. Two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> so, okay, you can go ahead and put your hand down. Um, so, why would you want to do card agnostic design? There's quite a number of reasons. It's a lot of business reasons. So we're going to go through this very quickly. We're going to go through pretty quickly the why and the what, and then we're going to spend a lot of time on the how, which I, I'm assuming everyone is in here on how. So expand your market to more carts, reduce maintenance, minimize bugs with common code. That goes along with re reduce maintenance. Uh, simpler updates when a cart upgrades, because Sometimes they do change things around. And uncover major issues earlier. When you are thinking about things and you're designing these things, if you plan out what everything's going to look like and how it's going to look and how it's going to interact ahead of time, then you get a lot of these issues out early instead of kind of run into them. Because how many in here have run into these issues where you're up and you're building all these things and then you run into this gotcha where you're like, it, ta it takes you out a couple hours to kind of figure out what's going on because it's, the cart does something you're not expecting. <laughs> so, you get, so if you really dive into it, You'll get those issues out early so you don't run into them later when you're 2 o'clock in the morning trying to finish a client project and they're wanting to know why you're late. And most carts don't have developer docs. You kind of go have to go figure it out for yourself for the most part. Um, and I'm going to plug Nicholas here. He's pretty much the one who's got the best docs for, um, for carts. There's three principles. The first one is first do no harm. A in other words, no hacking. Now, there is a little caveat. There are some times where some carts you do have to hack because they just don't, there is no method to really hook into them. And the AWO uh, component guy does it really well. He basically has three lines that he puts in, a couple, in two places, inside of Virtue Mart and inside of Red Shop to really hook in for his coupons because there's no other way to do it. So that's how he does his coupons is he does it with three lines of code in two places. And then when, he, when they, uh, Virtue Mart changes stuff, he has to go change his files 
And when the, car, uh, the store owner upgrades Virtue Mart, they don't have to go back to 20 million files and do a diff and, and merge in everything again. They just go into two places in one file, six lines of code total. So embrace the lazy coder new. Now what this is, it's not so much that you're being lazy, it's efficiency. What this is, you're trying to get the most, uh, most work out of the fewest lines of codes total as far as when you're writing all of these pieces, it might take you a while to initially write all this stuff, but when you're adding these new carts and these new pieces, these new functions, you only have to write these little bits of code. Joomla is going more and more towards this, where everything is being abstracted and doing smaller and smaller pieces where you don't have to do as much code to do more work. Now, think inside the box. Everyone tells you you've got to think outside the box to really get these things done. Well, I'm telling you to think inside the box. And what I mean by this, you think of the shopping cart as a box. And then you start breaking it down into smaller boxes. I don't know how many people have gone through the more traditional you know, coding classes, you know, in colleges, you know, where they tell you to, to, to do all this stuff, but this is the same kind of thing where you take all of these big pieces and you just start breaking it down into smaller and smaller chunks. And then you get pseudocode and then you start actually writing code. This is the same kind of thing. You think of things and put things in a box. And I know for me, it helps when I have some place to start. So we're going to start with what kind of process do you actually go through to do this? First, you need to select your cart candidates. Um, how, many, how many carts do you think there are out there? Five? How many people think there's five? That are in Joomla. Uh, at least five. Seven, 10, yeah, there's about, there's about 10, 12 that are actually released. There's two or three that are, um, yeah, alpha, betas, you know, coming out in various versions. Now, this is a lot to pick from, and they each have their own niches, and that's what you have to decide of where your niche is and where you're going after these. Then you have to analyze these carts. What similarities, what differences? How difficult is it going to be to program for this cart and this cart and this cart? You know, this, is, this takes a little bit of design work and actually analysis is digging into things. Decide whether you're gonna actually talk directly to the database or use APIs if they are available because uh, for some of the carts, they're not always available slash documented. <laughs> um, and then you have to choose how you're going to abstract it. And basically, when you have a different cart, what you're going to do. And then what you want to do is you want to write the common code first. In other words, in our instance, we're talking to eBay. So what we did was, is we did the pieces that talked to eBay first and got all of that stuff fleshed out of all the pieces because we didn't know what all the pieces that eBay needs. You know, they gave us a little bit of sample code but, and sample data, but it's not always everything that we need to support or want to support with them. So. We wrote the common code first. What configuration pieces that you need inside of the support that are not inside the cart that you want to support? What do you need? Authentication, you know, there's all kinds of authentication stuff that you have to worry about in there. There's a lot of stuff you have to worry about. 
Then you write your first cart layer and you QA test that. And by the way, this is just what works for us as a company and works for me. What, this is take, take of this what you will. Then we write one cart layer and QA test that. Because that will tell you, you know, d how does it flow all the way through. Then once you QA t that first, you write your next cart and QA test that. And then you rinse and repeat. All right, select your cart candidates. You know, there's 12, 14 different carts, depending on what's going on and, you know, how maintained they are. How do you select them? How do you narrow it down? You might have a client that come to you and say, I need this on this cart. Will you go build this for me? You've got a client project, it includes this. Market demand. Let's say you do a, uh, a commenting system and you've got 30 people coming to you and say, I want, you know, I want your commenting system on this cart. You know, and you got five on this one, and two on this one. You know, it kind of dictates the market demand for what you, for what your users want, as to where you're gonna, what carts you're gonna put it, uh, the effort into. And then there's cart type, full versus hybrid versus bridge. Now, full, uh, full cart type is, Basically, it's a full component inside of Joomla. It doesn't need anything else outside of Joomla, and it's fully, uh, fully contained. A hybrid is where it's kind of like K2Mart. Ever, anyone heard of K2Mart? Okay, that is a hybrid where you take K2 and VirtuMart and they work together. That's what we call a hybrid. A bridge is something like open cart, um, those kind of things where it is a separate application and then you're bridging into them. There's, a, there's bridge code to bridge into them. Um, and then you also look at the cart ecosystem. Like, you know, like Nicholas and Ronnie and several others, how welcoming are they to other third parties coming into their space and working with them and expanding their their system how welcoming are they how what kind of a thriving third-party extensions for that cart is there already Co part copy cart popularity and strengths that they have competitive offerings is there something already there that you have to compete with Personal experience, you know, what are you comfortable with? What do you want to learn about? And if you want to know a little bit more about the features and you don't know about the different carts, you can ask Deb. She did a, she's got a nice big spreadsheet of the different features of, she did about 10 different carts. So you can talk to her after class. Okay, we've narrowed down our carts. Now we need to analyze them. You look at code, you look at features, you look at functions, you look at the database. I know for me, when I'm looking at a cart and looking at really deep diving into, should we support this? I look at the code, I look at the database, I look at the session data, because that tells me how the information flows and not just, oh, well, we need to hook into here, we could do it this way, and we're done because I want to know how extensible it will be in the future if we want to add more features to this. So consider the code. When you're looking at the code, and you know, I'm assuming everyone in here is pretty well experienced at looking at various pieces of code, and you know, you look at code and you can just kind of tell how it flows and are you, is it able to follow? Can you follow what's going on? Pretty easy. The person who wrote it, obviously they can follow it, but can you follow it? And, or does it, your code, the, when, it, when you're looking at the code, does it look like that to you? When, you? when you think of code, does it look like that? 
Is it a true MVC? There are some extensions that are full cart extensions where they have stubs or they're a kind of a modified MVC. They, they have most of MVC there, but where most of the stuff you would think would be in a controller is actually in a, uh, the work is done in a model. So you have to kind of um, distinguish these things out. And like I said, easy to follow. Consistent, look for patterns. Um, you know, do they follow things or are they all over the place? Um, and one of the things that is becoming not as, it was more of a big deal back in uh, Joomla 1.5, is you'd have these extensions that would have code on the front running. And then they would have uh, a bunch of function calls, stuff running in the admin. And you're like, because, huh? Why is it in the, why are you pulling stuff from the admin that has nothing to do with the admin? Uh, it makes sense if you're doing the same thing in the front end and the admin. Right. I mean, if it's, let's say, creating a user or uh, adding a new product, and you've got front end access for like adding a new product, then yes, it makes sense to have the same functions there because then it's consistent. But to just put the functions in the admin for no reason, it, you know, that, that's not as much of a case these days. Here's a, here's a hint. When you're extending something, look for how much Ajax they have in their cart. That'll give you a clue how extensible their pieces are. Because the more Ajax they do, they have in their cart, because they because Ajax is really small pieces and l l individual defined functions. So if you if they have a lot of Ajax, then they're more than likely going to have a lot of where you can hook into them. Make it easy. Now we're going to look at the database here a little bit. Sometimes it does make sense to actually go into the database. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the similarities of data of the various carts. There's lots of information here. The basic information, title, SKU, uh, category, description, dimensions, weight, product description. And then here's actually what the various table. If you look here, here's the table. And then there's the column name. You'll notice that when um, a lot of them, they're singular and plural, but it has the same thing. Or uh, you'll also notice another difference is they have, it's all in one table, and then they have something with a language, like ENGB or something like that. Um, that's becoming more and more popular, but the, a lot of the multi-language um, initiatives to actually bring things back more back into uh, Joomla. You may be swinging, it may, may see a swing back to the other way where everything's in here and your the actual category description and, and product name may actually be um, inside of uh, Joomla. So that's one thing to watch out for in the future. But right now, you can see these. There's very minor differences here between the various carts of how they store the basic information. Because if you think about it, any cart that any cart that you've ever used, they have the they have to have the same basics of how they operate. And if I've got one of these wrong when I was actually, please let me know. I'm not perfect, so let me know if I got something wrong or whatever in here, but some interesting differences actually between the various carts. Red shop stock, red shop stock rooms. This is a kind of an interesting story or a funny story. When we were actually developing uh, Joomluster, we were, uh, we'd done a couple carts and we're like, okay, you know, quantities here. So we were coding along, 
and we're like, and we were starting to send stuff over to eBay, and you know, we, we'd done a couple carts, and we got Red Shop going. And we're like, where's the inventory? We're like, it's not in this table. There should be inventory for this product. It's like, we, you know, where do you go find this? So we finally, it dawned on us, it's like, oh, there's stock rooms. So it, we had to recode a, a piece of Joom Lister to actually select stock room because we can only send one quantity for eat over to eBay. So we needed to know which stock room you're gonna pull that inventory from because you don't wanna add all of them together to send over to eBay because you need to know which stock room you're gonna pull from. And their templates, their template system is a little interesting in that you can have multiple templates for the same kind of thing. For example, products, product, uh, product description. You can have multiple templates and you can pull from, from them and they can be multilingual and they can be all kinds of things. It's a little different than most of your other, than some of your other carts where they have files. So it's just one of those things that's a little different. Virtue Mart 2 custom fields. You're not in Kansas anymore. All the other carts, what they have is they, all of them have custom fields. So you can add pieces on to the custom fields. It, that used to not be the case. Now they've added a lot more custom fields. Um, there's still a few that, that it's very limited, but they at least have custom fields. Virtue Mart went one is very different in that they allow plugins. So you can have a map plugin and someone can basically say, drop a pen and get grid coordinates and have it stored as a custom field inside of Virtue Mart. So there's that kind of extensibility. There's dates, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with Virtue Mart 2 custom fields and it is radically different and they can be stored differently because you can go in and edit them differently. E each type can be different. So that's one thing to consider when you're doing card agnostic design is how are you gonna access that data? Because it can be different for each type of plugin. A shop and Mijo shop. Child products are options, well, kind of. There are certain pieces that you would expect with child products that you can override pieces. Well, in those carts, because they recently split and they're both based off of open cart, what you have is you have, um, you can do quantity. They each have their own quantity. They can each have their own price, but you can't change the picture. You can't change the description. You can change a title, but there's certain pieces that you can't change that you would expect from a child product because you, there's not nothing there for it. Hicka Shop, like I said before, is the best documented and easy to, to develop out of the box. Not just saying that because you're in the room. <laughs> yes, because uh, there's a lot of stuff where three lines of code and you've got your full shopping cart out of, instead of having to go look at session data or, you, or, or anything else. Three lines of code. So there's a lot of information like that. And as you can see, if you look up here, there's, um, you know, like UPC. You know, you use custom fields for some of them and then for uh, one of them, they have their own UPC. Uh, Parent-child relationships, you know, it's not applicable for those. Uh, parent ID. Um, you know, use a, a, for a short description. Some of them don't have it, some of them do. Um, it, it, there's a lot of information here that is different. So there are some things that are, that ha that are similar across all carts in Joomla, but there's some things that are different. And so those are the things you gotta kinda watch out for. S another thing I look at is I look at the session data because I'm kind of a geek. I like to peek under the covers and see how they're handling the data 
when a user is surfing. It's not so much that, you know, it's one thing you can look at the data when users, when, you know, you're setting up the cart and all that information's in there. It's another thing to see how they flow it around when people are surfing and adding things to cart, removing things from carts, um, you know, putting in their billing information. Where is this, you know, how's this data handled? VirtuMart 2 is outside the Joomla session space. Because I'm sure everyone here is aware that when you've looked at the uh, session data, you know, the, the global pound, uh, the dollar sign underscore session, all caps, and you've looked, you know, you've printed that out and you're like, because you're confused about what's going on. VirtuMart 2 is, well, Joomla has its own kind of array standard object that's kind of, that's protected and has that information there. Well, VirtuMart 2 is outside of that. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, and it is serialized. So in other words, all that cart data, when you add stuff to your cart, you remove stuff from your cart, the uh, custom fields, everything, it's, in, it's serialized. Now, parts of that that are also serialized, they're also JSON encoded. So that was interesting trying to figure out which pieces were JSON encoded. Um, and they also have a mixture, they do a mixture of standard class objects and array elements, which I, it threw me for a loop for a while. Um, and when you're, some of the, the custom fields, particularly for plugins, what they have is, depending on what part of the checkout process, they have redundant data. So in other words, you might see if you uh, unserialize the session data and you look at it, what you might see is you might see two pieces of the same information when you're looking at it. So depending on where in the checkout process you are, whether you've added to your cart, whether you're actually in the, uh, in the cart or still just surfing around. Hickashop. It is inside the Joomla space. What they've done is instead of having the cart information about when you add it to the cart, instead of actually having in the session data, he actually has a, a couple tables to keep track of the cart. And that's, that allows for, you can see abandoned carts easier that way because when the session data goes poof, it goes poof. There, there's no way to go in and see what was abandoned particularly for people who are not logged in. Because uh, it's easy to see when people are logged in, what, you know, what they, uh, to do saved carts, because you can turn that on in several shopping carts, and you can see what they had in their cart, and so when they log back in, it puts it back in their cart. Well, if they're not logged in, it doesn't really know how to save that information. So, but he has a way to where you can go in and see what people had in their cart and what was abandoned. Nice thing to know. Um, and then the cart table is pretty easy to, uh, the cart table that he has in the session data is pretty easy to read. Um, it's uh, standard class objects, it's pretty consistent. And the structure is pretty easy to follow as far as when you're looking at that session data. Red shop. It is also inside the Joomla space. It is laid out in an array. How many people have looked at VirtuMart 1.1 1 1, uh, session data? <laughs> okay. For those of you that have, when you look at the session data between RedShop and VirtuMart 1.1, you're going to see a lot of similarities. Um, but it's still pretty easy to follow because it's laid out pretty well. Now, step three, you decide what, whether you're actually going to hook into all this database stuff or you're actually going to use the API calls if they're available. Now, if you've done the um, you know, work correctly, you know, later on you can make it easier. Uh, 
one of the decisions is need to support plugins because a lot of them are actually getting more and more into uh, plugins and being able to support plugins. And so do you need to, is your function gonna have to support that? If you do, then you probably wanna use their API calls because a lot of them hook into that. Do you need just a little bit of info or do you need a lot of info Acro all across their product? APIs to support everything you need? Because I know when I was looking at this, there's some API calls to support part of what I wanted, but not everything. So I know for me, if I'm going to code part of this where I'm going to have to use the database, and it's not that, you know, there's not a lot of stuff that I'm going to have to link into, particularly if I'm not putting stuff in, if I'm just getting stuff out, I'm going to go straight to database for all of it to be consistent because it's, it'll be all in the same consistent format. But it, uh, that's one thing to consider. Simpler complex interaction. Now, for some pieces, you know, pulling stuff out is easy. That's simple. It's when you start putting stuff in. You start putting orders in. You start adding users. You start adding really anything like that that gets more complicated. And there's lots of tables and stuff that kind of hooks together to get all that stuff right. Um, so you generally want to use their API tables for that, or their API functions. But there's gotchas. This is an example. Uh, if you'll notice, right there, this is in one of the helper functions in one of the, in one of the, uh, uh, carts, basically to validate data, and they're doing a redirect in one of the helper functions. Um, I don't know about you guys, but when I start seeing redirects in helper functions, um, that kind of makes my life a little difficult when I start trying to hook into their stuff. There's always two sides to the API story. There's advantages and disadvantages when they're documented. Supported method uh, with examples. So in other words, uh, I'm just going to pick on Nicholas here because he's here. So he's, he's documented his, uh, a bunch of API calls for Hickashop. Those are documented. It's going to be pretty hard for him to change those because he's going to know that I've documented these. There's people out there using these. I'm going to break those people, and I have to support them. And they usually have a lot more examples. Um, as, oppo um, as opposed to um, if they're not documented, they can change, and they can break your code because they... They don't have to, because it's not documented and it's not supported. They don't have. They don't. They can change it, and because they need it, they need to add a function for something, another component that they're building. Not. They don't have to support that. Um, handles all the tables updates for complex. Like I said, if you're at, if you're pulling stuff out, that's that's pretty easy. But when you're putting stuff in. It's a lot easier to use their APIs because they handle all the interactions, all the checks. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff that go that usually goes into those APIs. Um, some of the disadvantages: um, if you need parts, if you need information from all over the system, or you need to put stuff in various places. Uh, let's say you're building a bridge between a um, your um, I don't know, Virtue Mart and your um, QuickBooks. And you need to sync all that information together about your orders, your products, everything. That would be kind of difficult with the APIs. Um, leveraging uh, cart infrastructure. Um, when we were building one page checkout, uh, I don't, uh, we built it inside of a module that it was one page. And when we 
submitted the data and we submitted the information at the end, we didn't have to support all the payment plugins, all the shipping plugins, because we basically submitted all that data in the format it was expecting. It took care of that for us. So we didn't have to go code all of that. There were, I mean, there was one, there's at least two that I can think of that they built whole extensions over. Or they, they had to hack VirtuMart all over the place to do it in there. Abstraction methods. The easiest way is to just put in a file. You know, we've all seen these where you, it calls a file, does a few things, and then has an array or, or, or a standard object class that they use. Then it gets into functions, a little more difficult, and then classes. What happens is files are easy to do. They're fast. You can just do them real quickly for the small projects. What happens is, is when you start getting into the bigger projects or it starts expanding, it actually flips. The classes become easier to extend and maintain, and the files become much more difficult. So eventually you'll get the classes if, it, if the product expands enough. And the, the premise here is that each, whether you're doing files or functions or classes, each cart has its own file or files if you need them. So that when you add a new cart, you create a new file. Now, we're going to do step five, write common code. This is probably some of the hardest stuff you're going to do with, because the, our temptation is to pull this stuff out of, the, data, uh, out of the, the cart and look at it and start trying to do this. For us, we're interfacing with eBay. So we ha uh, there's tons and tons of information about uh, accessing the uh, eBay API, that's the hard part for us, is shoving that information over to eBay. So we wrote that first, is to send all that information over to eBay. And, um, but you, what you want to do is you want to hard code the values instead of pulling out of the cart. You hard code the values in a, you, you've come up with a standard format, whether it's an array, whether there's several values, it, uh, there's a class that you use that has that information in there. You store this, you have this information in a standard way so you can use it later on. And then that's, you write the cart functions. So in other words, now that you've got your common code, you've tested out. So we sent stuff over to eBay. We, we did a couple, one or two products. We sent it over to eBay. We, we hard coded it all. Now, what we try to do is we try to pull that information out of the cart so that we have that same consistent database, uh, same consistent information instead of it being hard coded. This is Joomluster, the uh, well, part of Joomluster. This is the cron job. This is uh, uh, the basic high-level block diagram of how the cron job works. We determine what the card is. We get all the products. We have a, we have a function that gets all the products. Um, actually, what happens is, is we get the category IDs, the product IDs. We shove this over there. It does the processing, you know, the child products, the child categories, figures all of this stuff out. And then, oops, wrong one, wrong button. You, we, it does all that processing and then it gives us an array of all the, all the products in a nice consistent format so that we know what, what we're gonna be working with. We get the eBay pro items we do some three-way comparing. We determine what it's going to do, whether it's going to create new listings, update, end, 
you know, it doesn't really matter for our talk. And then we start processing those products. You know, we start doing, working on those actions. Because this takes, can take hours, because you're talking, because there's some big stores out there that, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 products. That's another thing you have to consider is how long are these things going to take and how big of a store are you working with? <coughs> it takes two or three hours for this whole thing to run. So by the time it gets down here to the, to the last product, you've got a live store here. So exactly, inventory changes. And so this is why right here, we get the product information right before we send it out. And then we also get the product images and then we send it over to eBay right there and then we rinse and repeat. We go through all the products and then at the end we, we tell eBay, when something sells over there, let us know. Just a handful of code to add a new cart in Joomluster. Because we designed it from being able to handle multiple carts from the, from the beginning. Four new files, and we modify one. That's it when we want to add a new cart to, to Joomluster. That's not bad, you know, when, you've, when you're looking at 10, you know, 10 different carts to, to try to support. Card agnostic design process. We've gone through all this. And once you've done, your, uh, uh, done one cart and we've done our QA test, then you do the next cart and then you QA test. When you do your second cart, what happens is, I know for me and the other developers I'm working with, there's a, when you're two o'clock in the morning and you're trying to get it out the door, what happens is, is you'll occasionally forget and you'll hard code something or you won't pull the hard, or you won't pull the data from the right location. But when you do the second cart, that kind of pulls those pieces out um, and then you QA test it because you're, those little bits that are not quite lined up because what will happen is, is, you know, this whole standard data that you have here, you're like, hmm, like in the instance where we had Red Shop, so now we have to add another piece of uh, stock room. So for Red Shop of informa uh, standard information that we sent across, and then you just rinse and repeat because when you get to the third, fourth, fifth, it's like this is cakewalk. You just pull out the, the basic information. It, you're fighting more with the actual cart than you are of anything else because everything else is tested. You've got just this little bit. Kate, it's Esther, yeah. Exactly. Very little. Um, occasionally, I'll have to add to the common code a piece of, oh, we do a check to see if that field is there. Because we started running into the various carts that it's not there, that it's pulled from different locations. So we do a check to just make sure it's not there. To make sure it's, th to make sure it's there or to uh, cart function to go get the information if it's available. Um, and then embrace card agnostic design. You know, hack as little as possible. Preferable, no hacking. 
Um, embrace the lady coder, uh, coder in you. I like to th plan things out a little more than just start writing code. I know it is tempting sometimes to start writing code, particularly for small projects. But for the bigger ones, you got to think these things out. But it'll save you a lot of time in the long run. Think inside the box. You know, keep putting things in a box, and then basically you'll get down to where the, the, the certain size where these boxes are actually your functions inside of your classes, or they and these larger boxes are your actual classes. And so then it makes it easier. Um, you know, it expands your market, increases revenue. Um, I like simple and easy. And I have been talking for quite a while. So are there any questions? <laughs> the, qu the question was, who was that? And that is AJ, our uh, company mascot. <laughs>